Yeah, this is Son Giordano reporting live from Annapolis, and here we're here with creator and founder of Be More News, Mr. Donnie Glover. How are you doing, sir? Outstanding. Son, how are you, sir? GCOM Media. Thank you for all of your support. Oh, not a problem. I appreciate it. We want to thank you for your support and your coverage of this very important redistricting process and the efforts that are being made here in a special session in Annapolis. Give me your take on uh, being up here in the first 12 hours of session. I often, I've heard it over the years that more of us, more people of color, mm -hmm. ought to be in Annapolis. I'm proud to be here with you, Hassan, from a media standpoint, uh, to be the only black media. Uh, Kenny Burns was here mm -hmm. uh, down in uh, Prince George's, Montgomery County. But uh, as, it, as it relates to Baltimore, it, I'm very proud to be among uh, the only couple of people that see the significance in redistricting. Uh, particularly as it relates to the African-American community in the state of Maryland and a potential for increasing African-American representation. What have you learned in these past couple of hours of being here this morning um, in your sense of the representation from Prince George's in Baltimore City and, and their likelihood of voting with the governor's map? Well, and, and I must admit that I've, I've learned a lot by reading your column, but from my understanding, from your column, from uh, several conversations over the weekend with a number of Democrats in particular, uh, I understand that Saturday night there was a Maryland State Legislative Black Caucus meeting called, is that correct? Yeah. And uh, I believe State Senator Kathy Pugh called it, mm -hmm. and this is the same lady that was running for mayor. Mm -hmm. um, and when she was running for mayor, she was rather critical, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, this current mayor. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, but then I, I'm thrown back to the Radio 1 debate where all of them showed up, and uh, the mayor, Stephanie Rollins Blake, said at Radio 1 this summer that these same challenges, I think that would be Rowley, Frank Conway, Kathy Pugh, and Jody Landers, all voted for the same TIFs and pilots that she did. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm a little confused as to where loyalties lie. One minute, you know, a candidate is representative of Baltimore, then they're critical of the leadership of Baltimore, and then they're right back when the other side is supporting the status quo. Did mm -hmm. you get that same sense? I did. I witnessed it. I don't know who represents me. I don't know mm -hmm. who's going to stand up unapologetically for African-American power here in the state of Maryland. I, I, I'm. I don't know. Maybe it's the Republicans. I mean, I seem to get a lot of conversation from them, and no doubt they haven't been the kindest historically, uh, at least in modern times, to African Americans. But I'm also taken back to the days of Bob Ehrlich and Mike Steele. I remember cookies were thrown at uh, former Lieutenant Governor Mike Steele uh, at Morgan State University. They threw Oreo cookies at him, correct? Yes, right. But yet this man did a lot, in my perspective, from, from my standpoint, for African Americans, uh, minority business, copping got three hundred million dollars. So I, I'm a little leery when I'm told by the Democrats, "Don't talk to the Republicans." Uh, why? Why not? I mean, this state belongs to everybody, and if you know Republicans are going to help ensure more African American representation, or at least help make it an issue. And again, when I look around, I don't see anybody but you, myself, and a couple others from from Baltimore. Uh, the numbers are few. And, and again, as, as pointed out by uh, Delegate Brave Boy and a number of others, the Democratic Party is 51% black. Why are we begging? Well, I've written a column. My, my column uh, uh, along the same vein as yours was beggars sitting on bags of gold. Why? <laughs> Why do you have to be a beggar? Don't ask, demand. I, I don't know. That's just my self-empowerment perspective. Outside of the obvious leadership of the women, like you said, Delegate Aisha Brady. The women are standing up. Where are the Jill men? Jill Carter, exactly. How Senator many men, Muse. except for outside of Senator Anthony Muse from Prince George's, have you seen down here that are really to, are ready to stand up and fight for the people in the African American majorities here in the state of Maryland? Well, and let me share this. To his credit, I, I sat in, in a private conversation with Delegate Nat Oaks. And he helped give me some perspective, some understanding on it. And, and, and granted, everybody's not going to be a, a revolutionary, if you will, and not that revolutionaries are bad. I mean, this country was founded on a revolution, mm -hmm. but uh, not in the sense of any type of takeover. But uh, I do think that there needs to be more discussion. I do I certainly, adamantly, vehemently, fervently uh, suggest more dialogue between the leaders the black elected leaders in Prince George's and Baltimore. I'm not sure that that conversation is being held. 
well, is Delegate Oaks ready to stand up against the governor's map and, and at least look at the other alternative maps being offered by Senator Pipkin and Senator I, Getty? I, I don't work for Delegate Matt Oaks. I can't speak on his behalf. He's more than capable. Uh, I, I, and I won't even presume nor guess. I, I don't know. Another woman leader, Carlotta Fellas, uh -huh. um, from the Fannie Lou Hamer pack, was up here uh, side by side with us earlier today fighting the good fight for this. Um, and it took Republicans, as you said, to introduce the bill on behalf of minorities today. What was your sense from, uh, and you did a, a, quite a few interviews with a lot of Republicans, especially that of the GOP chair, Alex Mooney. What was your sense on the GOP support of a three minority majority district map in favor of African Americans statewide? Carletta Fellows is uh, my shero. Today, she's my shero. I got to put her up there with the likes of Harriet Tubman. You know, Harriet Tubman said, uh, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they knew they were slaves. So with Carletta Fellow stepping up, and she's very politically astute, very politically engaged, very aware of, of the, the issue, the history behind redistricting, how it can benefit us. I'm just so proud of her. And, and I thank you, Hassan Giordano, and GCOM Media, and your columns and examiner.com for highlighting uh, what she and others are doing to ensure, you know, you know slavery was over, son, in 1865. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about 146 years later, so however, whatever to count, 1865, 2011, do, do we know that it's actually over? You are now free to move about the country? I'm not sure a lot of us get it. I think we have been uh, conditioned to continue to think like maybe our people did a long time ago. Are Slavery there, is over. So are you saying that there are still some slaves up here? I, 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 I sense some definite uh, slave mentalities. And, and, and mm -hmm. no disrespect, I call a spade a spade. That's, that's what my reputation is. No, they don't seem free to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Do you, What's your take on... Uh, Elijah Cummings siding with the governor, and do you think that too many, uh, too many black legislators, especially that from IE Baltimore City, take his word to be that of gold, and they're hiding well, undercover let's, from, let's, from him? Let's be clear. Uh, to date, mm -hmm. Congressman Elijah Cummings is the most popular black elected official in the state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a beautiful thing in this country. It's called uh, capitalism. It opens up free trade. Uh, just because you have a gas and electric, you can also have another uh, utility company. And uh, maybe, because the congressman hasn't really had any challenges, um, maybe it's time for somebody to challenge what he's been doing. Because uh, when I look out of Baltimore County, now he, Reverend Frank Reed, State Senator Dolores Kelly, and I don't typically go mess with that lady, she gets a lot of legislation done. Kwasi and Fume, all four of them push caminettes onto the black community. They played commercials repeatedly on Radio 1. But yet, right now, right now, Baltimore County Councilman Ken Oliver, the only African American out there, is receiving some uh, repercussions for going against the current county exec, Caminettes, who again was pushed in by Cummings, Kelly, Kwaisi, and Frank Reed. Why would this black man be losing Woodlawn? That's the majority black area. I'm, I'm perplexed and no one's saying anything. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't like the... I don't know anything else to compare to except a slave mentality. I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm sensing. I don't like what I'm feeling. I don't like this sense of African Americans have to walk around on eggshells while other groups boldly proclaim their agenda as if something is wrong with us. Lauren Hill said it best, why black people always got to be the ones to settle. And that's a great note to end it on. Donnie Glover, BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where they uncover the truth. Thank you so much for your report from the first day of special session here in Annapolis. Thank you, Assange, Donald, GCOM Media.